In today's Q&A, we're gonna talk about selecting the right 3D printer filament to print your parts. So hey, 3D printer technology really hasn't changed a lot in the past couple years, but the thing that has changed are the specialty filament offerings. There's tons of different types of filaments, and chances are that you only need to use a subset of them. So you may find yourself in a place of being overwhelmed and determining, you know, what's the right filament that I should be using for this? And for me, when I'm in that position, I think, you know, what's the form, fit, and function I'm trying to accomplish with this part? You know, sometimes a lot of people will print inanimate objects. They're just for artistic purposes, and you, you print it out using any material that you like in any color that's out there and there's a broad variety. In addition to those standard colors, you can get specially composite filaments that simulate wood, brick, brass, bronze, copper. Some of them have really unique and specific characteristics like carbon fiber or they have magnetic or glow in the dark or things like that. So there are lots of cool options. If you're just looking for cool, then that's up to you to go grab that stuff and do a few trial and error prints and figure it out. It's all for fun, right? Enjoy the process. But if you're making a practical part, something like this. Now this is a camera slider for a dolly. You know, there's some specific form, fit, and function that I need this to behave well in. And for me, it needs to be rigid. You know, it needs to have a rigid body. But these wheels need to be rubbery. They need to be able to grab the surface. It needs to be strong in these corners. So it needs to be designed for that, but also has to have strong materials. So how do you decide what materials to use? For me, when you consider designing functional parts through a rapid prototyping technology like 3D printing, then there's really only a subset of thermoplastic that are applicable. It's really it's really things like hips, PLA, ABS, nylon, PET, and even polycarbonate in some cases if you're able to print that. Each of those filaments have different requirements around how hot the hot end needs to be and they range generally from 200 degrees to 240 degrees Celsius with the exception of polycarbonate which may be over 300. In my case I can't even use that because I have a TAS 4 machine the hot end can only go up to around 240, 250. It may start melting the carriage actually if I go any hotter than that. And you also have to have a heated bed in some cases to prevent warpage in the part as well as to allow it to adhere and grab to the bed. As you learn these different filaments through trial and error, you'll learn what works best. And there's tons of options out there when you've selected a filament, what the right type of adhesion to use on your bed is. So that aside, when I'm selecting the material, there's really only a handful. I think it boils down to those six filaments. And then it's pretty easy to understand what are the determining factors in those six filaments that will help me decide. If I've designed the part to be strong and I've sliced the part to use the right type of infill or the, the right number of shells, that can increase my options, right? So if I have a strong designed part and I have a dense infill with a alternating pattern that makes it very rigid, I'm not so reliant so much on the filament as much as I am on the way it was sliced and the way that it was designed. Though granted, some filaments at the extreme ends of the rigidity and strength scale won't be conducive. For example, this particular part has flanges. The wheels actually bolt up into those flanges. If those flanges were flimsy, using something like PET or nylon, they may be very durable, but they don't have the rigidity. And so I would tend to lean towards a more rigid material, something like hips, PLA, even though it's a little more brittle. If you can't afford to have any bend in your part, then I would select one of those materials. If you can afford bend and you're more concerned with the wear of the part, then you want something something that's more durable like nylon or polycarbonate or PET, something that's going to wear and not have problems under those conditions. Also maybe conditions that it needs to operate in cold temperatures and things of that nature. Obviously if you have, if you want something to be flexible and needs to be rubbery, your options are pretty limited. There's TPU or TPE, you know, they're basically hard forms of rubberized thermoplastic and then there's softer forms of it. Ninja Tech ha it has a great supply of variation. Their newest filament called Cheetah is one of my favorite. That it's somewhere between soft and hard and it prints at high speeds and has higher quality and is very durable material. You can almost use it as a replacement for something like ABS. It's not quite as rigid as ABS, but it's more durable. And so in that regard, you know, it's competing with some of those other specialty filaments such as nylon and PET, but it has a more rigid attribute that makes it more like hips or PLA. So yeah, I mean, you really just have to narrow it down to what the form, fit, and function of your 
your part is and using the core standard six filaments and the criteria of those filaments to make the right determination. My recommendation is to go out, get a couple rigid filaments like PLA, hips, and print with those. Print some test parts with those and get your settings down to where you can do that perfect. So then you're very comfortable with printing a, a rigid material like PLA or hips. Then go out and pick a couple strong and durable filaments like PET, nylon, and ABS and figure out what you need to do to your machine and your environment to be comfortable printing in those filaments. Chances are you'll need those filaments, specifically ABS, maybe nylon, um, to develop the stronger mechanical designs. Uh, and as long as you know what your settings are, what the temperatures are, maybe you need to close your AC vent when you print ABS. Maybe you need to build an enclosure like I did um, so that you can control the heat within that environment and prevent warpage. You know, then those are the things that you should understand and know so that when you're faced with a challenge and you have very specific form, fit, and function for your part, then you can just pull those out of your notebook and you know the specific settings and how to print them. Especially if you have like multiple extruders which are becoming more popular now that you'll understand the characteristics and the printing settings that you need to use for those variable filaments. That's good to know. I mean the, the composite filaments are the most fun. Things like brick, wood, ceramic, conductive, carbon fiber, glow in the dark, you name it. Foam, gel, felt, all these really cool filaments, but they're very specific and very niche. You know, it's neat to think that you can print with glow in the dark, but how often would you really need to? And if you do, ultimately something like glow in the dark is really just ABS or PLA based. So as long as you've got your settings nailed for those base thermoplastics, then you're good to go with most of the composites. Uh, important note to know with, with the composite materials is that many of them have abrasives in them, such as the carbon fiber, which is generally an ABS or PLA based material with carbon fiber filaments ground up up to 20% and mixed into the plastic as the filaments created. Uh, the problem is is that a lot of 3D printers, lower end 3D printers, some of the older ones have like aluminum nozzles and that material is stronger than aluminum. As it's coming out, the abrasion from that material will wear out the diameter of your hot end. In which case you either should go with like a stainless steel or a brass a hot end nozzle to prevent wear or to reduce the amount of wear that you'll see with those materials. And those could be even things like, like the lay brick, the ceramic, carbon fiber. Those are all gonna wear out your nozzles a lot quicker. So be sure that before you do those, before you try those filaments that you have a backup set of your nozzles. You'd hate to wear out your nozzles and not be able to um, print. Also important to note that if you plan on swapping a lot of different materials out and trying different filaments, be aware that you're, you're likely to get jams. There's different thermal characteristics of the various printing filaments that can cause them to either harden in your nozzle or they can just not clean out as easily as you would expect. So they do offer a cleaning filament that allows you to run that through your machine and it supposedly will clean out any excess material. Or you could get like a micro drill bit that's the same size as the diameter of your hot end so that you can purge any blockage that may arise. So if you're printing with things like ceramic and sand and carbon fiber, you may encounter these sort of challenges. Aside from that, let's just bring it back around and say that there are three main considerations. You want to design your model to meet your form, fit, and function. You want to slice your model to meet your form, fit, and function, and then select your filament. It's a combination of those three activities that will give you the best printouts. And it's up to you to get comfortable and experiment and try the different infill patterns, try multiple shells, try different design patterns and physical characteristics to your models to see what works best for you. And don't rely on the filament so much as to compensate for a poorly designed or poorly sliced part. So take those aspects into consideration when you're choosing the right filament and always start out with the standard thermoplastics. Over the course of a couple years I've aggregated a lot of the information that I use to help me decide on specialty filaments as well as the standard filaments and I have those in a spreadsheet. I'll share those in the description so that you're able to hopefully benefit from that as well. Anyway, hopefully this helps. So get out there and practice. Try to print with some different infills. Get good at a couple different filaments both rigid and strong and durable and then try all those specialty things. Have fun, be safe, we'll see you next time.